Hello and welcome back everyone. Our next speaker is Ms. Ezgi Ada, the Director of the Growth Academy at NBT. She'll be giving us a whistle-stop tour of how the Growth Academy works. They'll also be giving six-month free access to all brands in attendance, so look out for an email coming your way after the summit from Ezgi. So hi Ezgi, can you hear me? Hi, uh, yes, I can hear you, Bruce. Fantastic. Uh, so thanks for uh, being with us uh, today. Uh, and uh, Without further ado, I'll uh, leave you on stage. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Bush. Um, okay, so today I will be talking about growth marketing and how you can achieve uh, growth in uh, six steps. So let's start. So the, the question is that how brands can grow. And it's not about hacking, but building growth strategies and delivering sustainable growth plans. So growth is an uh, ongoing data-driven approach starting from the very step. And the starting point of growth is a uh, checkup stage, it's internal analysis, competitive research, and customer search. And then you uh, turn all the insights you get at this stage into growth strategy. Here you create your personas based on previous research, uh, you create funnels, you create your positioning statements, and then comes uh, the planning part. You create a holistic growth marketing plans and tactic associated with your uh, personas and funnels. And then comes the execution part. Here you look at the performance and optimize the whole process constantly according to your insights and data-driven results. So as you can see, it's an ongoing uh, process. So let's dive into the uh, next uh, step. Whether you are a startup or an established entity, the first to do is an internal analysis of your business. We look at it through the lenses of 4P. And first, we look at the current, uh, current situation of your products and services. So what's your business structure? Who are your uh, target personas who are using uh, your product at the moment? What are their problems? How you respond to these problems with your product or solution? And what about your revenue and cost structure? your distribution channels, the performance of your online channels and your growth marketing, uh, your digital marketing channels. Uh, this kind of an analysis will help you decide whether your product is on a clear path to sustainable user engagement and value creation. So if you do not have a product market fit, then seriously, you don't want to be focusing on growth. If you have a product market fit, then it means you are ready to scale your business. So huge mistake people make all the time is trying to find a magic bullet uh, growth solution that will prove they are on the right track. But that kind of a solution does not exist. Or if it does, it's a spam tactic that won't work for a very long time. So, And it can uh, do more harm in the long run. So you have to check all these layers, product, price, place, and promotion. You should also check what your competitors have been up to because uh, competitive research and analysis is crucial to understand your market and industry better. In order not to lose focus, we recommend that you analyze the top two, three uh, main competitors. So explore their digital marketing channels, their websites, uh, social media to understand who they are trying to reach and what are their marketing messages. You can use tools like SMRH, similar web to find out about their PR, paid media content, social media activities. And you can try to understand whether they are uh, successful or not. This will help you uh, understand where you are lacking and you can get insights from their uh, activities. Uh, the next step is uh, customer research phases. Another important insight uh, coming, uh, coming from this uh, part, you have to know who uh, your customers are, really are, your potential or your existing customers. And you can do that with the help of uh, such, uh, such a customer research. Uh, one of the most important questions for B2B customers are what are their uh, biggest challenges uh, at work? So make sure you get the most detailed information from this question to understand their problems in depth so that you can better 
uh, design your products and services and better determine how your business can meet uh, their uh, needs. Questions about uh, shopping preferences is also important. These insights are very valuable to understand where your business should have an um, active presence and where you can meet uh, your potential customers. So you can all uh, you can get all this information uh, at the sales meeting with your potential customers, or you can simply ask them these questions uh, through surveys, through forms in your website, or at the onboarding stage of your uh, mobile app. In addition to that, you can learn about your customers from their from your current database, your email database, like. Uh, from your CRM system, how uh, your website or app store visitors find your page, uh, what do they search and land to, uh, land to your page. You can uh, check all these out. Um, so the next step uh, after you know uh, looking at your customer research and define uh, common patterns and uh, then you have to create a persona. Uh, persona is a generalized representation of your ideal customers. And it's better to uh, create different personas for B2B and the B2C because these personas have different mindsets, uh, different motives and needs. Ticket sizes are higher in B2B business. So B2B personas would invest a lot of time researching products and services, uh, collecting referrals, conducting a rational analysis, and at the end of the day, they make more value-driven decisions. And um, the purchase decision involves many departments of the company. That's why the sales cycles are longer in, in, in the B2B businesses. On the other hand, B2C customers may be more inclined to make an impulse purchase, a less rational one. So it's important to get your customers uh, right, your personas right, so I suggest you to spend as much time as possible to get it right, because at the end of the day, uh, these people are the ones you are trying to attract and turn into customers. And then, uh, the next step is to uh, position it. What should you be saying to your uh, target personas? Positioning is about how your product or your brand meets a particular customer need in a way that your competitors don't. So you should ask yourself, what's your business's unfair advantage? Identify your unique strengths and polish that. Uh, your positioning statement should be created for each persona because each persona has uh, different problems, uh, different pain points and dreams. So that's why your messaging should be specific for to that, to that uh, particular uh, need. Uh, the next step, uh, the uh, fifth step is uh, creating a growth funnel. Uh, growth funnel is a way of uh, breaking down the customer journey. So the funnel architecture depends on what your goals are and what actions you want uh, your visitors to take. Here you see a B2B funnel. It's a representation of one firm's uh, one company's marketing and sales processes. Such uh, growth funnels, uh, such a growth funnel give you a direction to your uh, growth strategy and tactics. When you track the volume of leads coming to your funnel, the number of the qualified leads, the percentage that makes it to the proposal stage, for example, you get a valuable insights about areas for improvement in your marketing and sales processes. Let's say if you are bringing uh, lots of visitors but uh, to your website, but they don't convert into leads to contact details, it means that uh, they can be a, a problem with your website. Maybe your user experience is very bad. Maybe you don't have strong call to actions or leads you generated through a certain paid media campaign is not qualified. Then it uh, it could be related to which audience you are, are, you know, you are targeting. Maybe you're targeting the wrong, uh, the wrong customer uh, segment. So you can discover the problem when you look at the whole picture uh, at this macro level, and you can come up, come up with the solutions. Uh, 
Um, so looking at the whole picture is important, but you should also uh, look at the onboarding journey of each customer. Here you are seeing a HubSpot contact page, a CRM tool. Uh, it gives you the detail from which source. It can be Google Ads, it can be Google Search, uh, organic search, it can be LinkedIn campaign. So it gives you the detail from which source you convert this particular person. You can see uh, with the help of this kind of a contact page, whether they open your emails and click the link you shared, you can see how many times they visited your website. So this is really crucial because when you look at all these data, you can know them in and out. This information helps you tailor their uh, onboarding experience. When you talk to them, you can highlight the points really important to them and you can leave out the insignificant details. That's why I suggest you to use a CRM tool effectively and understand your potential customers at the macro level uh, as well. So when you create the uh, strategy, you have your strategy in place and then you are ready to get in action. You have to con uh, consider the customer journey and your marketing and sales funnel when you are planning your marketing tactics. It is also critical to use each digital marketing channel in a holistic manner to turn your uh, potential customers into, into your customers. So first step is the reach and attract stage. Uh, here, you, here all the activities is to build uh, brand awareness and attract uh, your target persona. So what can you do here? Uh, you can use ads uh, and with advertisement, you can get near instant results and you can reach your relevant audiences. Of course, you have to target the right audiences. So uh, that's why you know, personal, personal creation is crucial. It's, uh, it tells you whom to attract and where to do that to which channel. You can also use at this stage social bookmarking. You can be active in uh, Facebook, LinkedIn groups. You can use Quora and Reddit. Uh, but important thing here is that uh, don't simply promote your products in the conversation and provide meaningful content here. So you have to be authentic. Uh, social media is important to increase brand awareness. Uh, first, you need to decide which social media platform best uh, present uh, your goals and fits your brand. Then decide on the social media content. Uh, create monthly social media uh, calendar and create uh, content meaningful for your target persona. Uh, solving technical SEO issues, uh, then creating relevant and qualified content, targeting the right keywords is critical to gain organic traffic. Here you need to, here you need a, a, a SEO plan, search engine optimization plan, and content plan that goes hand in hand. So I suggest you to uh, work with a performance marketing agency or a, perform, a performance marketing uh, manager, if you can. Um, increasing the uh, number of backlinks to, to your website can increase your ranking in search engines. But uh, backlinks are hardest to secure. So you need a concrete plan uh, to gain backlinks uh, at this stage. So the next stage is in, the, in your customer's uh, journey, your potential customer's journey is engage and converse stage. So here, the one thing to consider is the UX user experiment, uh, experience. Uh, consumers have less time and diminishing uh, attention spans. So you only have seconds to make an initial impression before visitors leave. Uh, you need to demonstrate value for the user very early in the journey. Then you need to capture their attention uh, with your content and get their contact information through forms. So how can you do that? You need to give them something, something first, something which represents value to them such as a webinar about an interesting topic for, for them or a free trial. Or you can write a use case, a success story about how you helped your client achieve something. Such gated contents 
uh, are great ways to increase your email database. You can also use pop-up forms here. Uh, you can place them to certain pages within your website, or you can even select when to show them. It can be up to eight seconds they land to your page or when they scroll down or when they intend to leave. So you can uh, offer discounts here, time limited offers, ask them to subscribe to newsletter and such as. Another way uh, to generate leads is, is chat tools. Many visitors prefer to uh, get answers through a quick chat rather than filling out a contact form. So being available when your visitors have question, questions is a great way to quickly uh, win them over. At the lead nurturing uh, stage, when you get their contact details, then you have to use email marketing in an effective way. Uh, today, many brands uh, send blessed email after blessed email to their entire list of prospects or customers. They hope, they, they hope that the message resonates with some of them and gets them to purchase their product or services. But does it work? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, it's really hard to tell because uh, it's really generic uh, email. So at this stage, marketing automation uh, allows you to nurture your leads through the entire buying process, delivering highly targeted personalized messages because you are sending emails to your database based on their actions their inactions or their personal data, such as a welcome email, such as a post-purchase thank you email, such as abundant uh, basket email. So their action uh, triggers your email activities and it can be highly personalized. Uh, at the last stage, uh, at the retain and growth stage is about um, you know, customer management. Uh, it's about making your customers uh, champions for your brand and securing their uh, loyalty. This part usually is overlooked, but I think is uh, this part is quite uh, critical because if the churn rates are high, if you are losing your customers, then it means that you have a losing business. Then it means that you don't have a solid uh, product. A market fit. So focus on customer retention and loyalty at this stage. You should look at uh, net promoter scores. Are they are your customers are, are are your customers satisfied with your products or services? Would they recommend it to, to their friends, their colleagues, etc.? Et I mean you can create surveys uh, and get their feedbacks. You can uh, can be creative here. Uh, another thing is that you have to encourage uh, repeat purchases. You can use, again, uh, email workflows uh, for upsell and cross-sell opportunities. If, if, the, uh, if your business model is a uh, month subscription uh, model, then and uh, if uh, the month subscription of your customer is about to end, then you can both remind them to renew their you know, subscription and at uh, additional feature uh, to their package. So, like I said, it's an ongoing process. The, and the aim is to create brand awareness and then uh, nurture your leads and then make them into, into customers. And uh, to do that, you have to use all these marketing channels in an holistic way, in a uh, really, uh, in a uh, in, in a uh, in a whole so uh, and the aim is at the end of the day to uh, turn your uh, potential customers uh, into into customers Oops. and the, the last stage here is that uh, after you execute your growth marketing plans you need to monitor and uh, and analyze the performance of your marketing activities the key uh, performance indicators, KPRs, the metrics, they demonstrate the efficiency and effectiveness of your digital marketing uh, activities. There's a, as you can see, there's a wide range of combinations of metrics that you can track. 
However, the important point at, uh, here is that not every metric is relevant to your marketing plan. So you should narrow down the uh, key metrics you monitor. If you want to increase brand awareness and if you want to generate traffic, then you should monitor uh, impressions, uh, reach and engagement metrics. But if you want to retain your customers uh, and if you are uh, you know, um, planning marketing activities and you are executing, creating some tactics on uh, for, for uh, retaining and growing your customers, then you should monitor net promoter score, churn rate and etc. to understand whether your tactics are working or not. So either way, the, the metrics, uh, the numbers will tell you what to optimize. And uh, your next move, your next tactic uh, will be based on these insights and data-driven uh, result. So um, it's a quick, uh, actually, uh, uh, you know, summarize of what growth marketing is. It's uh, in a nutshell. Uh, you, first, you have to look at your current situation, your competitor situations. Then you turn all these insights into strategies. And based on these strategies, uh, on, on this foundation, you can build your uh, marketing plans. And then you can try to understand whether they are working or not with the you know, well-structured uh, metrics, KPI systems. And with this kind of a methodology, with kind of a growth loop, you can uh, grow uh, your uh, business. So this is all uh, from my side. Thank you so much, Esgi. Uh, I just have one question to ask you. And uh, sure. I've been hearing this term a lot, growth hacking versus uh, growth marketing. So can you enlighten us? What is growth hacking? What is it not? Um, yeah, actually, we really don't love uh, that, uh, that phrase because we don't actually love how that phrase has uh, come to be interpreted because it actually, when Sean Ellis comes, uh, come up with this uh, phrase, it has not started this way, but now I think it comes across as a shortcut trick. It's like you can uh, hack your uh, way to instant success, but the best way to ensure uh, sustainable growth is to commit to a long-term and holistic, a growth-driven, data-driven, and customer-oriented strategy. For this reason, at MBTV, prefer to use the terms of uh, growth marketing instead of uh, growth hacking because it's not a, a simple magic uh, solution. There's not uh, such a solution uh, exists. So any company at any scale needs to have a growth mindset uh, first. It's really important to integrate growth-driven approach from, from the day one according to their goal. So you have to create funnels, you have to track your customer journey through these funnels, and you have to interpret the data. Uh, and this process is invaluable. Only then we believe that you can ensure sustainable uh, growth. So hacking, I think, is really misunderstood. Um, and then... Um, the real solution is a really uh, assuring uh, sustainable uh, growth. And you can do this with a concrete uh, growth uh, strategy and, and planning. Okay, super. Thank you so much for that, uh, Esgi. Uh, we're going to take a very short break now, a five-minute break, before we get back to you with uh, Rory Spence from The Valve Company, who's going to be talking to us about uh, benchmarking studies. So uh, a five-minute break, and we'll be back. See you then. <music> 